Hi, it's Andy Parker, and welcome to Crafting for Almost Everyone. Well, we're back into our art journal. We're going to do page two and three. We've done our cover, and now it's time to get into the nuts and bolts of it. I hope you'll stay tuned. So the first thing we're going to do, as always, is I like to uh, use gesso on this because it's one of these uh, cardboard books. There, uh, the the um, finish is very shiny and it's kind of hard to make anything stick to it. So we're going to put some of my homemade gesso on it so that something will stick to it. And I've put, I've wrapped a piece of wax paper underneath and that way if it starts to get stuck to itself the wax paper will stop it from doing that and I just want to make sure I want to I just want this to be as uh, white as possible because I'm going to do an experiment something I've never done before obviously an experiment right uh, I'm going to do an experiment with tissue paper and stamping that I've never done and I thought it'd be fun and then we're going to uh, uh, well, obviously this has to dry first but I just wanted to make sure we get a really nice finish. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wait for this page to dry and then once it's dry then we'll do the front half of it. I'm going to make sure this is all cleaned up and then we'll get going once it's all dry. Everything's dry now so we'll be able to take our wax paper out. See how everything kind of basically sticks to the wax paper and if there's anything that just needs to be kind of um, wiped off or I don't know what we'll call it scrubbed off maybe we just go around the edges and snap it off and then I'm just gonna close our book you just have to make sure that your book still has the ability to close after you've done this but that's basically all we need to do initially and then we'll be able to go from here and get our image ready to go and I'm gonna just put something heavy on this so it clo stays closed that'll do it and then I did this before with my cover where I stamped dream in there but I'm gonna flip flip, flip this over make sure we've got an edge going and then I'm going to be stamping with permanent ink which is an archival ink in case you wondered what the difference in inks are archival ink means that it's uh, not going to wear off or wash off. It's completely permanent. I'm trying to find my permanent. Okay, I'm going to use this great big one and I'm going to use some of these stamps as well as a larger image from this collection that I bought. You know, when you look at these, you think to yourself, well, this is really cool because it's this girl with the long hair, but I really like this girl with the short hair that has the tree behind her. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stamp both of them, just so we know. And these are both made by Santoro, and the one with the girl with the short hair, W-I-L-907-103, in case you can see it right there probably says it somewhere else but I don't see that that's this one and then the other one I'm going to be using I'll use a lot of the background pieces because I really like this image and then the butterflies and the rose and this one is WIL907101 so we might as well get them both out and play with both of them right so I think what I'm going to do is this is one of these great big ink pads and they're handy for these great big ink ink jobs you're going to be doing. I'm going to just ink the whole background, turning it and inking it from all different directions. Let's see if we can get this thing to ink. I'm going to put it like that holding it with one hand trying to make sure that it stays in place let's see if we can get this bad boy to ink properly there we go just exactly like I wanted it 
Maybe you can't even see it. There she is. We're going to cut out that edge and then we can layer the whole thing down on our journal. Let me get some of this out of here. Okay, here's our book. I'm going to open our book and all I need now is my collage page and I do want to cut more I don't have enough tissue paper on the left side of the image, so what I'm going to do is just take a blank piece of, of tissue and some of my collage page. And this is matte, and I bought it at Hobby Lobby, $6.99 minus 40%, so it wasn't super expensive. And I'm just using a foam brush to make it stick to my background. And I'm just going to lay this piece on that edge. And just to make sure that it's well adhered, I just take the collage podge and go over it again. You know, just to make sure that it's all attached to my background. Okay, I'm just gonna put that in there. And we're gonna lay her. We just want to make sure she's laying over our background like that. And glue over her. Just so we're sure we have it all well adhered. Now we'll let this dry and then we will trim it out. I mean you can always usually when you have it wet like this you can usually rip your edges off, but I don't want to rip my background design, so clearly I'm going to think about leaving that the way it is for right now. So what I decided I was going to do, after I stamped this, I decided I didn't like it. You know, hot mess days. You know my rules. I have issues. And so I decided what I was going to do, I have this Hero Art stamp that's called, upside down, it's called a silly scape instead of a cityscape and it's K5425. I thought that would be fun to stamp and on a scrap paper and put there. But before I do that I wanted to show you how I get rid of the extra tissue paper. Remember we had some on the edge. So all I'm going to do rather than cut it is kind of tear it off because remember that we use the the adhesive the collage podge on it and basically it makes it so it's easy to tear versus cut so that's what I like to do just rip it off the spots I don't want to have it on and that's that so that's how I do that and then if you have an area like this where it's kind of you know bugging you you can just use your nails and rip it off or use your scissors and cut it off but that's how I like to get rid of it and if I didn't tell you before, I also used a stamp set by Dilusions called Heart's Edge, and that's where I stamped these extra leafy images. And then I took the, the images that came with this set, and I stamped them around the edges. And I stamped them on this too. But for now, we're going to move our or our book out of the way and I'm just going to stamp this with Simon Says Stamp Ink. I know I always stamp it way too many times but I'm of the opinion that more is always better. Just like with candy, more is always better. And I'm just going to lay this. This is a very, very, very light piece of paper, of cardstock. I didn't want to use something that would be difficult to cut out because I'm going to cut all the way around this. And so I wanted to make sure it was easy. And there's our little uh, cityscape. And I'm just going to get my scissors and we're going to cut this out. Okay, I'm going to use some alcohol markers and I'm going to do them in city colors. Let me grab those and I'll be right back.
here's our buildings and I'm gonna glue them down so in the end I decided that I really wanted to make this uh, background uh, like a nighttime sky so I painted it black next step is I'm going to just get my collage podge and I'm gonna glue down my background and we'll just call it a day because as you know this didn't go the way I expected it to and I have a little foam brush here for me to brush it on the back of this with we just want to make sure that you get the whole back of this covered with your collage pod. Need a little bit more. Ooh, don't want to get that black on there. That would not be pretty, in case you wondered. And then I did do some gold stars. I don't know if I'm going to put those on or not, but we'll look at them and see what we think. Can't get much worse, right? Well, in my opinion, this background can't get a lot worse, but maybe you think it could get worse. And then if that's the case, I'm giving you a lot of kudos that you think it could go a lot worse than it is right now. Wipe that glue off. Okay, next up are the little stars. I'm a different glue for those. I'm going to use some wet glue. And I don't remember what kind of glue is in this container, but we're going with it anyway. Now the next thing I want to do is I want to paint my girl. So I thought I would use my Arteza brush pens for this. I don't know if it'll work, but we're going to give it a shot. I'm going to start with this green that's called crocodile green and see if we can get it to color our leaves. I'm going to start just in this top section and try to stay up here. And I'm going to make her hair brown. to figure out what colors we want her shirt to be. I think I'm going to make it in the orange family. I think I'm going to start with this color which is sunset yellow. I think I'm going to go for a darker orange. Orange rust. turning it around because I'm going to put some highlights, some darker brown highlights. Then I think I'm going to put some beige into my trees. Of course I don't have a beige, so I'm going to go with this other green that's called chamomile. It's almost like a beigey green. Well, you know how they like to put the kind of whatever you want to be talking about in an, in an art journal where people will add, you know, their thoughts to an art journal? Well, I came up with what I wanted to put on the left side, and so I'm going to stamp it a couple times because I need to, I have to get another S in here move my S a little bit further down. Is that how I do it? Ink that up. Oh, and these are from Stampin' Up! Alphabet Fun and they're the lowercase letters. I've had them a while, but I don't use letters much because I uh, usually use the bigger case letters because I like to do gifts where I make a, a um, set of cards that have your initials on them. 
we've got our hot mess so I want to cut that out with some scissors and I have some um, of these fun scissors that create a weird border so I figured why not try a weird border on this and see let's put it down there a hot mess <laughs> I like it it makes me happy and if all of you are out there going what is she doing well now you know I'm creating a hot mess and I'm owning it ownership is key you gotta be willing to own your mess oh geez I might have gotten some oh yeah I did I got some orange on there that makes it even better maybe I'll get more orange around the rest of it now that I've really screwed it up I might as well screw it up a little bit more oh yeah okay. I'm going for it it adds to the whole hot mess of it as you can tell I like this side and this side I'm just just gonna put a little well I'm gonna still use the same letters but I just thought I would write fall there are those letters now I just need to stamp them on a lot easier because it's just three letters and then I'll put the other L in there in a second So let me get this mess out of here and we'll look at everything and see how we like it. Okay, so here's our end result. I have my hot mess on the left and of course I do think it is one. Now some of you might really like it, but I just hate it. So I'm leaving it there and I'm leaving the hot mess as it is, as a hot mess because I had issues with it. And then on this side I really did like it and it reminds me of fall. I loved her outfit and the colors of it and I'm really happy with it. I like the tissue paper and the way that the whole thing kind of comes together. So for my first three pages of my journal, I'm really happy with them. I think they came out, well, not this one, but I'm happy with the general idea and uh, you know, then I go on to this one with the with you know, with the Halloween theme. So I'm happy with it. I think it's fun and it reminds me of why I wanted to do this. I wanted to try new techniques. I wanted to see what I could do with paints and what I could do with different things. So I'm happy with the the progress I'm making with it. I hope you liked it, that you give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Please tell your friends about me on social media because you know I love that. And thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.